oh yeah, you know, we got them all fooled. They think that Matt and I and Roberto and, and uh, Harry, they think we all love Jesus. Yeah, we know we're just tricking them into thinking we do that. You know how it is. They hear it from the pulpit, they believe it to be truth. All right, I gotta go, man, I think I'm up next. Yeah, no worries, I'll talk with you later. We could talk about this, this lie we've been telling the church all this time. Yeah, don't worry about it. They can't hear a word I'm saying. It's cool, huh? To be in the back of the church and, and just live that way. All right, man, I'll talk with you later. Bye. Hey, guys, how are you? Good morning. So I'm running a few minutes later having a conversation with a friend of mine on the phone. No big deal. No big deal. I'll tell you about it later, I promise. Okay? Is that, play about it now? Oh, well, no, because it's, it's a, you wouldn't understand, so I'm going to keep it to myself. Yeah, it's actually, it's something I keep between Nurko, Paul, and Pastor Matt and myself. We can't keep it to ourselves. Yeah, we don't share everything else. Yeah, I'm not part of that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> part of what? Did you guys hear my conversation on the phone I was having? Yeah. Oh, no, I've heard about pastors walking to the bathroom and stuff with their mics on. So whatever you just heard, just kind of disregard it, okay? That's bad. Hate when that happens. They God, I wasn't in the bathroom. Hate when that happens when you get caught saying, saying something. But see, the reality of it is this. Pastor Matt, Roberto, Paul, and myself, we truly love Jesus. And we truly love people. And uh, But sometimes you wonder, right? Is what we're being told the truth? We wonder that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to share this real quick too. If you were not in church when Pastor Matt was gone in Alabama, you really missed out. You really did. Because here's the thing. When Pastor Matt reads scripture, it hits him a little different to hold, at that day in his life with the Holy Spirit. And when Deacon Paul reads it, or Roberto, or... Um, Alex, or myself, or a guest speaker when we have them, you're really missing out on experiencing the entire true scripture of God's word through how the Holy Spirit touches somebody else. So I challenge all of you, the next time Pastor Matt is gone, be here. Because you're going to hear how the Holy Spirit touches someone different. You really just kind of miss out on that. I just want to say that. Oh, look, we're in the... Uh, John here, Paul's talking about love. Of all things for him to be talking about this morning after my phone call. <laughs> Let me just share with you real quick. You all know, if you know me at all, you know for a fact that I believe that this book is to be true. To be true, 100%. And in his, I just want to share this passage with you real quick. You guys have already forgotten about my phone call, right? Am I? You got my phone call. No, you haven't? Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, you need to read First Corinthians chapter two and verse. Is that my my, is that my buddy calling back? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he does that. My command is this. Keep in mind, this is Jesus Himself speaking, and us receiving the benefit of John documenting that. What a great benefit we have. Because I can't imagine. Yeah, we're in John fifteen twelve. Sorry about that. John 15, 12. My other command is this. Love each other. You know what? Hold on a second, real quick. There were things that we have gone through in our lives that we know that our fathers went through and they never shared with us how to get through it. Wouldn't it be great if there are certain things we knew we were going to have to experience? Young men in the church. Things you're going to have to experience in life. Wouldn't it be great if your earthly father took the time to explain to you situations you're going to go through and how to get through them? Wouldn't it be easier in life? Stay with me. Here's Jesus speaking himself. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for her friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command, 
Hmm. I'm going to say something. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends. If he's calling me his friend, he's sharing me with his businesses. Right? There's a lot of things in business that people who work underneath someone in management, the people underneath don't know what's coming. Not because it's kept, because the timing is not right, or sometimes it's hidden. Right? Christ himself here is saying, look, you are no longer servants or beneath me. You are friends equal to me in the Heavenly Father's eyes. Here we go. Ready? I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father. I have made known to you. That was Jesus' whole mission on planet Earth, was to bestow upon us the Heavenly Father's will, <coughs> the commandments, the command. He's telling us right here what the Heavenly Father wants and how for us to and how we should live. What a beautiful, what a beautiful opportunity. You do not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you to go bear fruit. He's going to tell us right here how to bear that fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Ready? You ask whatever you ask in my name. If his command is for us to love one another, and I'm living in his will, then would not my command be the same as Jesus Christ himself? So if I ask something in the Heavenly Father to give to me, and I'm living the way Christ wants me to live, would it not be then the fact that my his will would be my will? He was asking, he's saying, look, if you love one another, I love you, you love one another, you want my will to be what's in your life, then you'll ask the Heavenly Father to teach us how to love one another. Remember last week I said when one person gets hurt in the church, the whole body church gets hurt? Right? When someone hurts a family member in my family, the whole family's hurt. When someone hurts someone in the family, church family, the whole family's hurt. When someone chooses to love someone within the church family, the entire church family receives that benefit of love. Receives that benefit of love. How amazing is that? Ready? This is my command. This is my command. Love what? Each other. So if my will is to ask the Heavenly Father for things in my life, and my will is the same as Jesus Christ's will, what am I going to ask Him for? For salvation. For love. For forgiveness. Those are the things he's talking about if we ask in his will, the Father the Father will give it to us. Greater love has no one than this to lay down his life for his friends. And we know Jesus physically laid down his life. Here he's talking about our spiritual lives. To lay down our spiritual lives for a friend and love them the way Jesus Christ loved them. And you know the reality is the little stupid phone call, made a phone call, is not the truth. You know, I've watched people within our congregation truly step out and love one another. The, 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 a true love that we can have in Christ. Wouldn't it be great to have that experience everywhere we go? About a week ago, so I said, what if I had the ability that when I walk past somebody, based upon how I live, they would live in life or death? Remember I mentioned that? I'm saving it for right now. We have that power. I don't mean the power, I can't grant him eternal life. Only Jesus Christ can do that. But how I live my life can help maybe move that person in a direction to how they should live their life and then they accept Christ as their Savior. And how I live my life can determine if they live their life in death, in sin. Christ's command is this, to love one another. Love thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. It's the first of the greatest commandments. And the second is like it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And if I love Jesus and that's how I live, then don't I want to love my brother the same way? Heavenly Father, we come before you right now and we just thank you, Lord, for the love that was 
for the love that ran in red off the cross. Your love ran, your love ran red. I thank you for that. In King Jesus' name. Amen. Buttery B, Jesus took the Bible. Wait. Did I say Bible? Why are they reading? Jesus took the Bible. Wait, no. Okay, I got reading this wrong. Hold on a second. Oh, it's a bread. Okay, it's my dark. Let me try this again. Why are they reading? Jesus took the Bible. <sighs> Sorry, Pastor Matt, I keep messing that up. So, why are they reading? Jesus took the Bible. We'll just go from there. He gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my Bible. Oh. Then again, body, body, yeah, body. Then he took the cup, he gave things and he offered to them. Drink from you. This is my love of the new covenant. Oh, wait. <sighs> Sorry, I re- I reclude all the pages of my Bible back together, literally, and I it's it's not worded the same, maybe. Let's try this again. Then he took the cup, he gave things, he offered it to them, drink from it, all of you. This is my love of the new covenant. We'll stick with that word love and blood. We'll call them the same. How about that? Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of love. Oh, wait. Who glued my Bible back together for the forgiveness of sins? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blood that was shed on Calvary. That your blood, your love did run red. Lord, I thank you that you live in my heart where my blood is red. And I pray that you allow me, when I encounter people, that you allow me to allow that blood to run through me. They would see that your love is truly, truly, truly about them. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.